accidentally ending up having a one night stand with a villain, getting trapped inside a chrome casing on your date, having your kids erased from existence. That's just the everyday for some heroes when it comes to the wonderful world of awkward comic book dating. Welcome back Nerd Squad, I'm your host Amanda McKnight and this is Top 10 Nerd. Join me as we count down the top 10 most awkward superhero romances. Oh, so awkward. Let's get into it. Number 10. Human Torch and Victorious Definitely one of the most awkward moments to have happened in recent comics, I think. During Fantastic Four issue 33 at Doom's wedding to the Latvian hero Victorious, it's revealed that she actually slept with one of his enemies. Yep, you guessed it, Human Torch, aka Johnny Storm. While this is the kind of behavior we've come to kind of expect from Johnny Storm, we wouldn't expect it to have messed up everything as badly as it did, or we wouldn't have expected it on this level, I guess. The truth initially was kept a secret, but finally up at the altar, Victorious realized her mistake in keeping it from her husband-to-be, Victor, and decided that he actually should know. Yikes. I would not have wanted to be one of the wedding guests. Ugh, would have been rough. I mean, it was rough. It became a mess really quick. Number 9. Superman and Cheetah I know what you're probably thinking. When did this even happen? Well, it took place in a series that explores Superman's time on Earth when he was young and wild in his early 20s, before he settled into his job at the Daily Planet and ended up in love with Lois Lane. In issue number 3 of Superman American Alien, we learn that a young Clark Kent one time ended up on a yacht where Bruce Wayne's birthday was being celebrated. Of course, this was all a ruse for Bruce, who as a youngster traveled the world, learning and honing his skills as a combatant and detective. So he wasn't actually there for his birthday. In fact, he wasn't actually there for pretty much any of his birthdays. As such, Clark ends up meeting a young Barbara Minerva while on the yacht. Barbara knows it's not Bruce, but still decides to have a little fun time with this mysterious stranger, and the two end up sleeping together. Barbara even encourages Clark to embrace people mistaking him for the absent Bruce, and you know, just have a fun time. Which in the end, he does. If this strange romance bothers you, however, don't worry. It's all in good fun, as American Alien is not considered a part of the main continuity. When I found out this happened, I was like, what? but it's not part of the main continuity. It's not within the main canon. And friends, before we move on to the next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more awkward romances, well boy, do I have some more stories to tell ya. So be sure to let us know you want that list by giving this video a thumbs up. Maybe next time we'll talk about some awkward villain romances? There's some of those too. Number 8. Stargirl and Shazam Stargirl and Shazam's relationship wasn't really awkward from their own perspective. The two heroes were both teenagers at the time, and Stargirl was aware that Shazam was really teenager Billy Batson. But it got really awkward when other heroes who didn't know of Shazam's true identity and age caught wind that the two were together. It became so awkward, in fact, that Shazam decided to break up with Courtney. Billy knew he couldn't make everyone understand without revealing his true identity, and so for that reason their relationship basically had to end. Which, yeah. That would be pretty awkward because Shazam definitely looks like an adult. So, yikes. Not good. Number 7. Storm and Doom Oh man, if ever there was an awkward romance, this is definitely one of them. Although that's so often is what happens when we have romances or rather flirtations between heroes and villains. Recently in Sword issue number 7, we saw a callback to the history between Storm and Doom. They once had a sort of impromptu date. That date however did not end too well and she was trapped inside a body tight chrome casing, aggravating her intense claustrophobia. Storm would escape this chrome prison shortly and later would go on to heal from her claustrophobia over the coming years, but she wouldn't forget the slight that Doom had made against her. While initially she thought Doom a gentleman back then, today she is wiser. We see the topic come up again recently when Victor attempts to flirt with Aurora during a diplomatic dinner between the two, with Storm being the Queen of Mars slash Araco, and Doom being the ruler of Latveria. Storm quickly reminds Doom that she has not forgotten their past, to which he hastily apologizes and claims that her imprisonment was due to a a malfunctioning Doom bot who had acted on his behalf that evening years ago. I don't know, Doom. I don't think I'm buying it. Number 6. Starfire and Jason Todd Starfire and Jason Todd are a weird couple for, well, a number of reasons. Fortunately, they never really went full couple and really only had an implied relationship slash flirtation during their time together on the Outlaws team. Still, this pairing was super awkward considering that Starfire had no recollection of her time with Dick Grayson, but also was implied to be younger in the New 52 continuity with her being associated with the Teen Titans. Jason is, I believe, only a few years younger than Nightwing, which also makes everything 
kind of weird between Jason, Nightwing, and Starfire because it's kind of also perhaps unintentionally implied that she would be a lot younger than both of them. And yet, even in this continuity, I believe she and Dick were still almost married. That still happened, I think. There's also the whole thing between Starfire just seemingly being interested in sleeping with Jason, and then pretty much immediately after actually sleeping with Roy Harper, aka Arsenal. Number five, Archangel and Tuesday Bird. I don't know if you have read the Archangel one shot Phantom Wings, but if you haven't, you need to go do so. It is a treat. If you like weird things, you should read it. In this comic, Archangel ends up trapped in what appears to be some kind of pocket or nightmare dimension. In reality, it's being created and manipulated by a mutant who we learn is named Tuesday Bird. No, I'm not kidding, that's her name. Tuesday seems to possess the power to manipulate birds, and we learn that the trauma she suffered is actually causing them to repeatedly attack her. In the end, Warren and Tuesday end up with a weird attraction to one another, where Tuesday simultaneously finds him both beautiful and disgusting due to him looking like a bird, because he's got wings, you know? And Warren wrestles with his own issues regarding losing his wings, his transformance into Archangel, and his feelings about his new techno organic wings. At night, she secretly anoints his wings with oil while he sleeps. It's very weird, it's very creepy, it's very sensual. I don't want to spoil it for those who want to go back and revisit this one, but I'll just say it ends on an even weirder note if you can even imagine that. Number four, the Wasp and Havoc. That's right, at one point, two of the most complex Marvel family trees were intertwined via Janet Van Dyne and Alex Summers' relationship. These two got together during their shared time on the Avengers Unity Squad. Although they might seem like an unlikely couple, both of these two have some shared experiences in the sense that they both had some weird and awful relationships. So seeing them together kind of gave me hope that they could find something less weird and maybe more healthy together. Their relationship even resulted in the birth of Katie Summers, their daughter. Ready for the awkward part? Well, Kang ends up resetting the timeline to save the universe, which means that their time together and the birth of Katie basically gets wiped mostly clean, meaning Katie now never existed. Although sadly, both Janet and Alex do remember her existence. And Janet and Alex would also end up breaking up following Axis when Havoc ended up coincidentally shielded and therefore remained evil. Boo! Justice for Katie. Justice for this relationship. I love that Alex is like, it doesn't matter now because I'm evil. Evil, so I don't care that we were in a relationship because that's what evil people are like. Number three, Wallace West and Raven. Wallace West and Raven have to be one of the weirdest couples we got out of the new 52. Why? Well, because Wally West II was considered to be much younger than Raven. Some weird stuff went down when we got the new 52 as this was meant to be a complete reset of the continuity. At least, that was kind of the idea. In reality, the New 52 was more like a reshuffling of the continuity, with some things staying the same and others changing, which really only made everything more confusing and awkward for readers. One such bizarre change involved the Teen Titans. We got a fresh new Teen Titans, mostly, except some people aged up in New 52, joining just the Titans team, while others seemed to remain eternally young, staying with the Teen Titans. One such member who got left behind was Raven. She was part of the Teen Titans team, despite her being an original member in the New Earth continuity of the Teen Titans, so she should have been older. This confused people. She ended up in a relationship with Wally, which seemed pretty controversial considering that Raven should in theory be much older than Wallace West. This was a fresh continuity, but it was really hard for people to forget the past, like back when Raven actually almost ended up dating the original Wally West, Wallace's older cousin. Wally seems to be implied to be at least a decade older than Wallace West II. Then add in the fact that Raven has played the role of mentor and Wallace has played the role of student, and yet yeah, it gets really weird. Number two, Huskin Angel. I've talked about this one a few times and it doesn't get any less awkward the more that I do. In fact, I feel like every time we come back to it, it only gets more awkward for me. Husk is Paige Guthrie, the younger sibling of Sam Guthrie, AKA Cannonball. And one of the siblings, I should say, as there are many Guthries out there. While Sam was introduced to us in the comics in 1982, Paige wouldn't appear until a couple years later, showing up in 1984. Angel, however, was first introduced in issue number one of the X-Men in 1963 where he's initially implied to be of college age, but then of course it was later retconned that the original X-Men were teenagers when they joined up, more like high school age. Still, if Angel was around in the 60s as a teen and Paige was introduced in the 80s as a teen, I think you see where I'm going with this. Initially, Paige dated Chamber for a while, but later she ended up as Angel's rebound following his breakup with Betsy. While also being seemingly much older than Paige, Warren would also sometimes treat her like she was a kid 
kid and, and not really like his equal, which also made things even more awkward for readers. Also, there's the time that they were flying in the sky and some things happen. That was awkward. In front of Husk's mom too, which is also awkward. Number one, Batwoman and Nocturna. Batwoman and Nocturna got together following Kate Kane's breakup with her then fiance, Maggie Sawyer. In fact, Nocturna in the comics was the one who caused that breakup. Behind the scenes of the narrative, there was a lot more going on though with Batwoman's marriage to her fiance being basically called off by DC, who didn't want to see it happen. Arguing with the creative team behind the book, who did want to see it happen. So Nocturna isn't just bad for Batwoman because she full on manipulated her into letting her feet off of her and dump Maggie and date her, but because she also represented a bigger issue that was going on at the time. The relationship wasn't only abusive to start, but was also abusive throughout from the start, with Natalia also behaving in a very controlling manner, consistently jealous of Maggie, even after Kate had broken off that engagement. It was just a big yikes of a relationship that also highlighted more awkward and awful problems going on behind the scenes. What do you think are some of the most awkward comic book romances, or almost romances? Which pairs would you like to see get together despite the fact that it might be kind of awkward to start? What awkward relationships do you wish were completely retconned out of existence? Ah, <sighs> Norman and Gwen. Thank goodness. Thank you. Thank you, comics gods. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I am your host, Amanda McKnight. Till next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.